Welcome to Take 4. My name is Emmett, and today, Ian will be showing us how to make wooden spoons. Hello. My name is Ian Dunn, and today I will be teaching you how to spoon carve, and I'll be teaching you and Silas. Yes. So, we'll be making a spoon something like this today here. This one was made out of birch. We're going to be using maple today. Here's another spoon that I'd made a while back, a little bit more decorative. And this is one that my father had made, which shows you how diverse the spoon carving craft can be. So we're going to be teaching basic spoon carving today. Silas, have you ever made a spoon in your life? No, I've never made a spoon. Have you I've, ever done any woodworking? I've whittled a little bit, but not much. Okay, so we're going to show you how to make a spoon with simple tools. So today we're going to be using very simple tools, traditional hand tools. Um, you're gonna need some kind of saw like this here. You're going to need a hatchet, which I will talk about later. You will need a good sharp carving knife. You will need a hook knife right here. With these tools, you can make a spoon. And we're going to show you right now. All right, so this hatchet here um, was an old vintage hatchet. I found it at an estate sale or a yard sale, flea market. And it was probably in not very good shape and it was a normal hatchet. So I went and I used a grinder. And you can see what I did here. If we hold this up, there's very little bevel from this edge to this face of the hatchet. On this side, which would be like a normal hatchet, we have a much bigger bevel from the edge to the face. This allows us to get a more straight cut when we're using the hatchet. So we're gonna be giving you a basic rundown through the various steps, taking the spoon blank from a log, we're gonna be splitting it, we're gonna be looking at the grain, we're going to be designing the spoon shape, we're going to be roughing it out to various stages. We're going to talk about drying the spoon and what we need to do afterwards to shape the dried spoon. Uh, and we're going to show you basically the basic quick steps to make a wooden spoon. So the other day I cut down a small maple tree and that's what we're going to be using today to carve our spoon. Now because it's been warm and I don't want my wood to dry out, I want it to stay as green as possible, I covered the ends up with two bags here. Um, and that will trap the moisture in somewhat. So I'm going to cut these off. So we're going to take our saw and we're going to cut off a length for our spoon. Now before we cut, I do want to take a look here and point something out. This is the pith of the tree. And this here is probably some rot in the tree, which we can trace from this end all the way up to this end. Now, if we leave that rot in there and we use that section of the spoon for our carving, what you're gonna end up with is a spoon that has this on it. This was actually from a length of this very piece of wood. And you can see the discoloration in here, but it's also very soft and rotten. So we would wanna try to avoid that as much as possible. All right, Silas is gonna hold the end here and we're going to cut off say that much right there. All right, now we have our two lengths here and we're going to start chopping them. So we want to remember again, we have our rot right here. We do know that it goes through pretty much straight across. So we're going to split it like this. And also another thing, you'll see this end here has a little bit of end check right through the pith. We're gonna to want to split on that check. We don't want to go and split. What is end check? So there's a little you can see a little crack right there through the pith. See that little line? Uh, that could have been naturally, or it could have been from felling it, or it could have been from drying out. Probably from drying out because this was the exposed end. This was still in the tree, so yeah, probably from drying out. So we're going to want to make sure we heed that, and we are going to split it in that manner there. Now, these tools, the hatchet, the knife, they are very sharp, so please be careful. All right, now, you could, if you wanted to, you could try to split it like this, which does not seem like a very good option to me. Generally, we would use a mallet and our hatchet, put it right there on the end, hang it over the edge a little bit. Don't just set it right here in the center. Hang it over, position it, and then we can start. Uh, 
about not in the center, hanging over the edge. Ah, yes. <laughs> I can't hit anything for the life of me, but you know. One thing that can help sometimes, if you're having some trouble starting your cut, let's just say we're right here, having some trouble, make sure that you're swinging the hatchet, I mean the, the mallet, in the right manner. Um, you don't want to use your wrist like this, or your elbow. You want to kind of use your whole shoulder and go swing right there. Now we have our half here, Silas has his, and you can see these dark lines running through. What that is, is that's still the pith, you can see it right here. So we're going to want to either chop that off with our hatchet, or we're going to want to start chopping down like this and removing it. I'm going to start doing that right now. You want to keep your hands out of the way at all times. Um, don't ever have your, you know, your, your thumb hanging over the edge like this and chopping, or your hand like this. Also, rule of thumb, once you get above halfway up the piece of wood here, when you're chopping down, you're going to want to spin it over like this, so you can keep your hand out of the way as much as possible. We're going to want to start on the bottom, and we're going to work our way up at an angle like this here. This is going to kind of be a stop cut, so that when we split the piece, it doesn't follow the grain too much and maybe run off and ruin our piece. So we want to try to control our cuts. We're going to start down here at the base. Okay, a little bit more and we will get rid of that the leftover bit there. Uh, now I'm going to flip it over and we'll do the same thing on the other end. Okay, that's good enough for now. Silas, so, you want to try? And you want to start at the bottom and work your way up? Yes. Um, I would want to hold this at a little bit more of an angle like that and maybe hold yeah. the hatchet like that there. Start on the bottom as much as possible. If you are having trouble splitting, or, or but let's say you're trying to get rid of the pith and you're having a lot of trouble doing it. Right. Um, what you might want to do, and this might be easier, is hold the X up on the end here, sit it back and then eighth of an inch. Yeah, let's do that now. All right, so the more down pressure you hold with the hatchet, you're not gonna have the piece wobbling around on you. Now we're going to start laying out the shape of our spoon. You can get very detailed or you can get very rough. So I'm going to start by locating the center here where the pith was with my pencil. You can still see the pith there, so right up through there. Now I'm going to start laying out where I want the spoon. I'm going to say I want the bowl to be shaped like that, and then the handle will come up like that. Sometimes some spoon carvers will say that you should use a crook in a tree because if you look at the profile of this spoon here it's pretty flat across this spoon here has much more shape to it it kind of curves up like that uh, this would be called the crank of the spoon and to get the crank you're actually having to go in this instance here with this piece of wood we're gonna have to kind of chop into the grain of the wood so right now our grain is running like this here it's straight across like this our spoon is gonna be here so to get that shape, we're going to have grain running straight across like this, here. Some spoon carvers suggest that instead of using a straight piece of wood like this, you go and look for a natural crook in a tree, which would be a bend. And the bend is going to lend itself to the shape of the spoon because the grain is already running in that direction. For a couple reasons, one, it's going to be a little easier when you have to shape it. Another reason is uh, strength. But if you're, you know, eating soup that's strong enough to break a spoon, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so with this spoon here, we're just using straight grain. Um, now I'm going to start and split down right like that so that I have a piece that's more manageable and more the size of the spoon. So now we have a spoon blank that is much closer to the actual size, and we have two straight edges here so I can start to lay out the shape of my spoon better. So we'll do that with Silas's right now. Um, if you are having trouble with the line, you can use a magic marker. That would work as well. Um, or company Veritas does make pencils that are supposed to be for drawing on wet wood. I haven't used one. I don't know. I can't judge them. But these work just fine for me. It gives you a basic idea. When you actually shape the spoon, some carvers stay very close to the lines. Uh, I guess it depends on skill. Mine usually tend to be somewhat different than the original design.
we have kind of a swell on the handle here and then it narrows down here where it goes into the bowl. That's gonna be so that we can hold it better. It's gonna be a little more comfortable, but generally spoon carvers will say that where it narrows down here, you wanna make it thicker in this direction here for strength. So we have the point where our bowl and the handle meet each other, so we're going to make a little line going straight across to the edges. Then we're gonna carry this line down like that, down like that. Now I can start to lay out the profile of my spoon. We know we want this to be the top of our spoon roughly. So we're gonna start here for the top edge and work our way down to say right there. This is gonna be where the bowl is. This is gonna be the angle of the bowl. This is called the crank. Now we can work our way up again and I might leave it straight across like this. And then for the bottom, same thing. Say like that. I might make it a little thicker. I go like this. And again, the shape is bound to change later on. So now the next step here, we need to make a stop cut so we can start to shape our handle. Um, we're gonna be shaping the handle mostly with the hatchet. So we wanna make a stop cut because otherwise, say we start chopping right here. We wanna start our cut here and we wanna chop down, get this shape. Well, it's not gonna work because once we start getting down into here, it's just gonna split with the grain and we'll blow our spoon bowl right off. So I'm gonna hold my saw up right here to that line. You can start with a backwards cut here to get it started. So I'm gonna go right down to where the handle and the bowl meet. It can be a little bit to the outside if it needs to be because that will give us a little bit more room to work with later on with the knife. Okay, same thing on this side here. Now we have our two stop cuts there. Hand this over to Silas and he can do his part. When we split wood, this is the grain here. So when you split, it's going to follow the grain like that. Say I'm trying to make a cut like this here. This is somewhat like my spoon handle right now. And this is the outside edge here and the grain's running like this still. So this is the spoon shaped something like that. Kind of a weird looking spoon, but you get the idea. If I try to go and make this cut here first, it's going to be very difficult. I'm going to not have a good time at it, and you can see it just splits like that. So what we're going to want to do instead, with my spoon blank, is go split down the grain to the widest point on our handle. All right, now this here, instead of swinging down like this, uh, we should be able to just bounce it. So this is the thickness of our spoon here. Um, I can chop some of this extra waste off and that will uh, make it easier to shape it because it's going to have less material. Alright, now we have our line here, shape of the spoon. I can start to use my hatchet and get down there. Same as before here, we're going to want to start at the bottom and we're going to make very direct cuts. Um, now one thing you don't want to do, make sure you don't do this, is accidentally hit the bowl of the spoon. This is a very difficult part to make sure you don't do this. It's very easy when you're chopping here to accidentally hit the bowl area of the spoon. And what will happen is you can either split it right now or you can go and start a split and in the drying process, because this is all still green, it can go and split even worse. So we want to make sure we don't hit the bowl of our spoon, at least not too much. Did you draw a line on there? Yeah. <laughs> it's there. Oh, yes, right there. Yeah, we're supposed to have our lunch break in there. Right. Yeah, we're supposed to have a lunch break, but somehow the moms forgot to get us actual mix. supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to get trail mix? So, now we're having our little break here with our original Lipton iced tea, yeah. peach flavor. Do I drink it? Ah. Uh, is this energy. the advertisement break? Yes, it is. <laughs> Feel the energy. Okay, we have the lower portion of both of our spoons shaped here. Uh, now I'm going to spin my spoon over like this, and I will start to work on the end here. Um, and that's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to take one swing, maybe two. All right, so now we have our end shaped here. Um, I neatened it up a little bit with a knife afterwards, um, but we'll be getting into the knife section more later. All right, so now we need to start working on the crank here because we have the overall shape mostly here, except for the bowl. We need to work on the crank or the profile of our spoon. So I'm gonna put my line back in 
right in here. We're going to use our saw, saw down to that line across the top. Now I'm going to do the same thing as before when I was cutting this way. I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to do stop cuts. We need to trim this down a little bit so it reaches the bottom of the bowl here. I'm going to start doing that. I think I'll start. Hmm. I'll start here. Now I need to cut out some of this area in here because our handle is going to be way up here. And I need to shape out the bowl. All right, now the next part here, which is a little bit more difficult than the outside, or, or, or than that end of the spoon bowl, is this end here, where it's right next to the handle, because we don't have a handle to hold on to, to chop down. Um, so there's a couple different techniques you could use. One, you could hold your spoon like this and your hatchet like this, and um, you're gonna need a sharp hatchet to do that. That is possible. Um, another option, you could chop downwards like this here, except um, on one side you're going to have the problem where the bowl's going to be face down, you can't see your line. The next step we're going to shape the bottom of our handle here. Again we're going to want to start at the bottom making stop cuts. So there's the profile of our spoon so far. I'm going to work on the bowl again. So to start with, I'm going to want to kind of give a little bit of a bevel to the entire bowl to make it easier when I get to the knife. And then I'm going to chop a little bit of the bowl itself down here, like this. Okay, that's the general shape of my spoon so far. Um, I think we'll move on to the knife now. So to start with, we're going to do basic um, beveling and shaping in the handle in the bottom of the spoon bowl. And then we'll move on to shaping the inside of the spoon bowl in a minute. So to start with, you're going to want to make sure that you always go in the direction of the grain. So in this instance here, let's say I was holding the spoon this way, and I come into it like this. Well, the grain's running this way here, so it's going to come, it's going to follow the grain. I'm going to blow my bowl off. So I'd want to go coming down the grain, never go into the grain. Always come down from it, just like this. Another thing that's important is you want to make sure you don't use a grip with a knife where you could cut yourself. So you always want to make sure you have something between you and your thumb or the other part of your body. Say, maybe the other hand, like in this instance here, I'd want to be very careful. You're going to want to be able to use a powerful cut. So say, like in this instance here, Silas is using his knife and he's trying to shave it down like this here. But, you don't have much strength when your hand is out here when you're shaving. Right. So if you hold it up here more, you grip the knife like this, and the spoon like this here, you can pull away from the feather like this. Okay, now after we have our spoon roughed out in shape, we can take our hook knife and start to hollow out the bowl. So to do that, we're going to want to go across the grain, like this here, we're going to start keeping our fingers out of the way. We're going to slide across the grain here. Uh, going across the grain is going to uh, give us the uh, cleanest and easiest cut, because if we go this way with the grain, it's going to be much harder, and we can only go part way, or we're going to be cutting into the grain that's going this way, and it could lift a big piece of our spoon apart. So we're going to keep cutting across the grain, it's going to be easy to cut this way. Um, it might take you a little bit to find out which angle you should hold your hook knife at, uh, but once you get there, it'll cut very nicely. And it cuts very quickly too. Okay, now we can eyeball this edge here with this edge of our bowl. We can see if they are even, they are not, so what we want to do is shave off what needs to be taken off of one side. And it's easier to do this after you have hollowed out your bowl because then you don't need to worry about removing all the material. Only one edge. 
You want to try to remove all of your axe marks from your spoon. You want to try to get it fairly smoothed out. So see any of these lumps in here? Just want to try to get that knocked out of there. Um, at first, when we started using the knife, we were taking very aggressive cuts. Once you get it down closer to where you want it, you can start to take gradually finer and finer cuts. Now after you have it roughly shaped out, you're going to want to put it, because this is still green, and when it dries out, it's going to be prone to cracking and warping and twisting. So you're going to want to wrap it up in a towel to let it dry. And this is going to slow the drying process down. It's not going to let the air come to the spoon directly so that it won't dry out too fast. Um, wrap it up in a towel like that. You can put it aside, um, keep it out of the direct heat and direct sun. And then in a few days, you can check it, and it'll be dry enough to do the rest of your work. All right, here's a, an example here. This was from a few days ago, this spoon. I carved it green, and then I put it in to dry. I let it dry out, and now we can do the rest of our touching up now that it's dry. It's going to give us a cleaner cut, and we can get it right down where we need it. So it will be a little bit harder to cut when it's dry, but at the same time, you can take nice, clean, controlled cuts, just straighten things out where you want it. Okay, so that's basically how to carve a spoon. Um, after you've got it finished where you want it, we would put it in a jar of olive oil for several days, let it soak, and you can dry it off, and you're going to have a spoon that will serve you for a long time. So thank you for watching. Uh, we've enjoyed doing this video. We'll see you next time, right here on Take 4. See you later.